Welcome everyone to Product One's YouTube series. Today we're looking at Creo Simulate focusing on contact analysis with finite friction. Uh, so we have done a simulation video uh, in the past. If you haven't, please check that out first before looking at this one. So what we are looking at here is a scenario where you having, for starters, two components that are going to collide. So what we're going to be having here is this brass component coming in and colliding with this aluminium component. So that means that this surface here will open up to allow this to actually slip. So what we've done is we sort of like representing only half of the geometry for the sake of time in this analysis. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to start with is assigning uh, constraints. Please bear in mind that for this particular analysis, we've already defined the material for both components. So what I'm actually doing now is I'm applying different constraints for this uh, particular design, both for uh, the brass component. And I'm also going to do uh, what we call a constraint in this cutout. The reason for this is I'm going to show you how you can create a measure where you can calculate the force required to push that object through. So I'm going to define just a basic constraint on this. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to free up X and Y. Sorry, X, uh, Y and Z. And then before I forget, I'm just going to jump straight up and create my force. So let's call it F clip or whatever. I'm going to call it underscore because I already have one existing. I'm going to say I'm looking at a force, but I'm going to look at the reaction at a constraint. Magnitude that I'm going to be measuring is X. So that means that the direction of motion in this instance that is uh, linear to this is x. So now that I've defined my measure, I'm going to leave it at that. The one other thing that I want to start inspecting is this distance over here. So this distance between those two edges is 17.6. I'm going to use that distance, that's why I'm copying it, you'll see now in a second. So let's start by firstly assigning a boundary conditions or constraints on this uh, copper component. So here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be specifying or freeing up those two properties. And last but not least, I'm going to now assign only Z to be fixed for X. I'm going to set up what we call prescribed constraint. So this is where now I'm going to say the direction in which X is acting. So if you were to look, X is positive going that way. But what we want in our scenario is a value going that direction. So that will give us a negative value. So because we're going uh, the opposite direction. So we've got now minus 17.5. So this will move that distance. So that's how you set up what we call a prescribed uh, uh, constraint. So you can create what you call a mesh. I always tell the guys that it's not necessary for you to create your own mesh and size of the elements, but it depends on a requirement. So if we were to stick or re rely only on the on the mesh that is generated by the system by default, you see that we'll have 822, what we regard as tetrahedral element, and total number of edges and faces. So you can make modifications to that. Let me show you how. So I'm going to take a component, be it, let's take this one here. I'm going to say this component have it to have the size of tetrahedral elements to be four millimeters. However, you can say in that particular context, I know that everything else is four millimeters. I'm talking about the elements now, but make that surface to be two because I want to maybe have 
a couple of of elements there and maybe here let's make it one so if we were to create a mesh for this you'll see that it will take slightly well not that long but you now get to have so many tetrahedral elements and so many faces and you can see the variable sizes of those elements so you can also make different types of elements if you want to so if you were to take something like a map mesh, I can select two surfaces of interest and define where I'm going to be subdividing this. So what that gives you is what we regard as brick elements. So you can tell there I have brick elements. And of course, you can change how this is viewed as well. You can say increase the shrinkage and just to exaggerate the gap between elements as well, maybe for reporting or whatever the case is. So you can do uh, different types of elements inside Creo Simulate. So the most important thing to do when you doing what you call a contact analysis is the following. You, you can specify surfaces that are going to collide. In this case, the default is free. We're going to say make it contact. However, I want to be able to specify what we call a static coefficient of friction, and that's why I choose finite friction day. So I've actually stipulated contact interface between that surface and that small surface day. I'm going to repeat the process, but then choose the two big surfaces because they are bound to also be in contact later on. And what simply means that I'm going to also choose here finite friction and specify the same coefficient there. Now we are just about uh, ready. All that we need to do now is define our analysis. So we've got a measure here and we have our interfaces that we've set up and our prescribed uh, constraint. So here's what we're going to be doing. So I am going to specify a brand new static analysis. I'm going to just modify this for the resolution side of it. And you can actually set up uh, uh, values, be it from experimental sessions or just adding a couple of rows and columns where you define a time stamp for your study. We know that I want to check at 0.5 and maybe at one, let's say, second. And you can even specify the magnitudes if you, you want to. All right, now that we've defined this, I'm going to say, let's not make it a single pass, I'll just make it a quick check so that we speed up uh, this particular analysis. And I'm going to say user defined and I can specify the total number of steps. And I can say, make them equally spaced. So that is all that you need to do in defining what we regard as a contact analysis. So I'm not going to run this analysis for the sake of time. I have ran this one here and I will just show you the result. So if I were to pull the result window and obviously the result dialog box, I can toggle between a couple of things. I can say I want the results to be deformed, but I also want to animate them. So that means that from a displacement point of view, this is what I have. So you can see that there's a certain size of displacement that's happening and I can modify this. I can say, look, I don't want to look at displacement. I want to look at stress. I can say I want to look at stress and moreover, I want to actually showcase the elements as well in the result window. So you can do something like that as well. All right, so you will get something that looks similar to this. And that is how you create contact analysis with finite friction. Of course, we can also showcase the graph that we had. So for an example, if we were to interrogate a, the measure that we were dealing with, so that's the measure in, in our case, and what we will actually do is we want to compare this measure uh, with maximum displacement on x and 
This here shows you the force needed to snap through this particular component. So this is how you do something as complex as this with simplicity and with ease. And you can see that it's in, intuitive inside Creo Simulate. If you've got any further queries, please do not hesitate to contact us. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Until next time, goodbye.